you get a chance to go to Iowa, go ahead and skip it. Here's the deal. I am uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, so this is cool. Uh, to be here, okay, you're just gonna woo, that's fine. Um, just woo it in every city name, that's okay. I love getting to travel. Uh, people are usually super nice. Uh, there's a little judgment when you're from the South. We were in Wisconsin a couple weeks ago. Uh, people in Wisconsin think they don't have an accent, <laughs> and they think my accent is adorable. So he's like, your accent is precious. Where are you from? I said, I'm from Tennessee. She was like, do you date your sister? That's what she said. <laughs> I was like, no, we broke up. All right, <laughs> too far, lady. I'm kidding, guys, we're still together. You make it work, okay? You stay in Tennessee, all right? Focus on the family, that's what we say. I like that no matter where you're from, I've noticed this, no matter where you're from, there's an area more backwards than you that you can point to, have you noticed that? It's like a coping skill. Tennessee, we need it, okay? We're near the bottom in education. We're like, yeah, we are bad, but what about those slack-jawed yokels in Alabama? Good grief, they're the worst. Alabama's like, yeah, but come on, Mississippi. They can barely read Mississippi. Mississippi's like, yeah, but Paraguay. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> I love getting to travel, it's my favorite part. I was just in Iowa for the first time a couple months ago. Never, have anyone ever been to Iowa? Anyone ever been? Guys, if you get a chance, you get a chance to go to Iowa, go ahead and skip it. Here's the deal. <laughs> save you a trip. I'm only judging it by the weirdest thing I saw there. I was on a tour bus with another comedian. We're driving along. It's just corn everywhere. Then we see a funeral home. The funeral home sign said this, now offering double-decker grave plots. <laughs> I was like, you pull this bus over right now. <laughs> I got questions. We get out. The guy was digging the hole. I go, perfect. I'll ask you, what do you mean double-decker? He goes, well, we go 10 feet down instead of just six. We go 10. You know, then we put the first person in. You know, then we put four feet of dirt. <laughs> and then I guess they wait. <laughs> and I want to be there when that second person goes in. You know, so I can be like, king me. You know what I'm saying? I just need, you can move freely after that. That's your best move. Why well, stop at 10 feet, go 20 feet down, put your whole family, just play connect four. Do whatever you like, it's Iowa. <laughs> I told that joke in a little Baptist church last week. It did not go well. <laughs> This lady came down to the front after the show. I would never have a double-decker grave plot, sir. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. She's like, I'm not offended, but my husband's not saved. You know? So if I die first, then they put him on top, then the dead in Christ try to rise, he's blocking me. And look, that's just, that's, that's just science, y'all. That's, <laughs> I don't know. Something about me, uh, this year I've lost about 50 pounds. I'm pretty proud of that, 50 pounds this year. Working on it. Still, still wearing dark colors and untucking. This is phase two. I did the, uh, the low carb diet. Him ever do the low carb thing? Is that a thing here? Keto? It's a lot of cheese and butter and meat. You can lose weight. It's amazing. You just, it's, you know, it's like uh, you just stay away from the carbs and the bread and the starches and the happiness, all of that. And then you can lose weight. It sounds like Disneyland for fat people. That first week, they're explaining it to you. You're like, I can have a six egg omelet with bacon fried in an inch of hog lard and loose weight. <laughs> Sign me up, Slim. Hallelujah. Let's go. <laughs> That's week one. I'm in week 12, y'all. Week 12's different. Because <laughs> I've lost some weight. And also, I want to murder my family. <laughs> so, <laughs> turns out, carbohydrates is what's holding civilization together. In case you're wondering what was doing it. <laughs> That's right. This whole North Korea thing could be solved with a crescent roll. I'm telling you guys. Kim Jong-un just needs some pancakes. He's hangry. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't know. I am, uh, one thing about losing the weight, my snoring's gotten a lot better. My wife's happy about that. My snoring was getting so bad. I woke up one day a few months ago. My wife was in the next room. I was like, are we that couple now? She's like, I can't, it's too loud. I was like, do I have the apnea though? People are dying from that sleep apnea. I go, do I have that? She goes, I don't know what that is. I said, do I stop breathing in the middle of the night? She said, no, I wish. <laughs> That's hateful. <laughs> Snoring's bad though. Even worse than the snoring though, y'all, I have what's called uh, night terrors. Does anybody know what night terrors is? Anybody have that? That's not cool. I'm like seeing stuff in the room. You know, you think the nightmare's over, but oh no, it's going on. I'm punching and strangling, and it's my wife. It's bad news, y'all. It's no good. You know, and she does this. Maybe some of you ladies do this. You hang your outfit on the door for the next day. You need to stop doing that. You're scaring people. 
I wake up, it's like shirt, skirt, shoes in the shape of a person. I'm like, I said, you need to stop. She said, there's nothing on top, you moron. I said, which one is scarier to you, okay? A stranger in my room at night or a stranger in my room at night with no head wearing my wife's clothes? It's terrifying. She started taking this stuff at night, y'all, to sleep, called z -Quil. Have y'all seen this z -Quil liquid from the makers of NyQuil? Well, because what, NyQuil isn't already 80 proof? What are we doing? Here's the commercial if you've never seen it before. Hey, let's say you're not sick at all. But you just want to lay down for a long, long time. <laughs> z -Quil. I was like, sweetie, call it what it is, all right? Booze and snooze. That's what it is. <laughs> Teetotaler, get out of here. She's cool, though, man. I'm trying to learn to give better gifts, you know? Anniversaries uh, just passed. And I noticed this. Uh, Facebook and these social media sites, they know our special days. They start sending you ads. Have you seen these targeted ads? The week of my anniversary, I got this one. Maybe you've seen it. For $59, you can name a star after a loved one. Y'all see this? Name a star for $59. I was like, yeah, or for zero dollars. <laughs> I can just tell her I did. You got an inkjet printer, you can make up all kinds of certificates. That's what I found out. I got Christmas taken care of. <laughs> you see that one that says Alpha Centauri? Mm -mm, that one's Uncle Jimmy now. I love you. One thing I'm trying to get better at for real, be more present in, our, in my marriage, and that means like, uh, the cell phone's gotta go, man. It's too, it's too controlling. I was in the bathroom the other day, doing my business. Suddenly I realized I ain't got my cell phone with me. Y'all have that panic attack yet? <laughs> I was like, what am I gonna do now? I was grabbing any reading material, shampoo bottle, conditioner bottle, whatever. I was playing Tetris with the floor tiles. And then I grabbed the Q-tip box. Anybody ever read the Q-tip box? <laughs> Don't do it. It'll shake you to your very core. You read that box, you realize, I've been cleaning my ears wrong for decades. Here's what it says if you've never read it before. The Q-tip box says this, do not insert Q-tip into ear canal. I was like, pardon me? No, I've been cleaning my ears for 30 years. And by that, I mean, I stick a Q-tip all the way into my ear until I touch what I can only imagine is my brain. And then I twist it till I go cross-eyed. And I pull it out and pray there's not blood. That's how you use a Q-tip where I come from. That's right. <laughs> it's a fun job. I grew up, I never knew I'd be a comedian. I grew up a pretty awkward kid. I was painfully shy. And the people always wonder what the W is about. What's Johnny W? It's short for my last name. I just shortened it, make it easier for everybody. I have a hard to pronounce last name. So I just shortened it down, make it easier. My last name is uh, Baxter. And, uh, that's no, my last name is Wethington, which seems easy, Wethington, but I get Washington and Wellington and Liechtenstein. That's a weird one. The worst was third grade. I was in a new school. Anybody have a hard to pronounce last name here? You know my pain. If the teacher gets it wrong, call and roll. You're going to get mocked the whole year. She gets to the W's. I'm sending her telepathic messages. Please get it right. I can't deal. Wethington, Wethington. She's like, all right, Walker. Okay. Watson. Okay. Weigh a ton. <laughs> Weigh a ton on the back. Can I just head home now and develop an eating disorder? Thanks so much. You're the greatest. Was a chubby kid in middle school for sure. I had asthma. You may have asthma here tonight. Hold your inhalers high. Don't be ashamed. I love the asthma. It was great, man. That little asthma note from my doctor, that was my get out of gym free cards. What that was, just hand it over. There you go. That's your copy. Okay. It's laminated. Yeah, I got lots more. I'm going to have a seat. Oh, we're climbing the big rope today. I don't think so. I will not be getting friction burns on my crotch. I'm going to have a seat and wheeze to myself. That was eighth grade. Then ninth grade came. Suddenly it was the high school PE teacher. He wasn't having it. What is this? Asthma. I can cure asthma. I was like, you can what? His cure for asthma, y'all. He made me run uh, what's called suicides. You guys know what that is? Suicides? It's a horrifying series of wind sprints. They call it suicide. I don't know who named that, but let me tell you something. If you make a little fat kid run back and forth until he dies, that is homicide. That is not. They will prosecute you. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> But that wasn't even the worst day in gym class. By far the worst day was the first gym class of 10th grade. That was the day of the president's physical fitness challenge. Oh. Do they do that here? Yeah. They gotta stop. It's like the Hunger Games. <laughs> He'd line us up. Everybody take a minute. 
get a buddy. We're going to time each other. Everybody take a minute. Get yourself a buddy. I was like, I don't need a minute. I don't have a buddy. Okay. I'm the shyest kid here. I look up. Everybody's got a buddy but me. I'm mortified. I look at the end of the bleachers. There's a girl sitting by herself. I don't even know her. Is she even in my class? But it doesn't matter because they're not going to put a girl with me. They did. <laughs> Come on down here, Sally. It's fine. You'll be with Johnny. Come on. Now, you're going to time Johnny, okay? He's going to do push-ups for a minute. You time him, count them. Jumping jacks. You're going to count them, time him. You know. Then you're going to hold his feet. <laughs> and he's going to do sit-ups for a minute. Yeah, that turned pretty quickly into a game of how many times can Johnny fart into the face of a stranger <laughs> before she begins to cry. And the answer is 17. 17 times uh, is the number of times. So. I liked being a kid uh, other than that story. Uh, I liked being a kid growing up, man. It's fun stuff at church. Now kids have all the cool stuff at church, man. Trunk or treat. Anybody ever heard of that? Trunk or treat? I didn't know what this was. My church did it. I was so excited, man. Reach our community, whatever. It was awesome watching my pastor explain it to the older people the week before. He gets on the mic. Now, we know we don't live in the same time we grew up in. We can't be out there knocking on strange people's doors. It's not safe. What we're going to do, we're going to get all the automobiles in the parking lot, in the dark, decorate them. We're going to teach kids that car trunks may be full of delicious candy. Hallelujah. Where did everybody go? <laughs> My wife and I, we don't uh, have kids. That's something about us. We have been praying about it. A lot of people in my church have been adopting. We're like, maybe that's for us. We're, and we just finalized the process. We're going to be uh, adopting this year. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Excited? Very exciting. We are uh, adopting a highway. And uh, it's going to be great. I like giving back. I'm just, we have one son, Miles. Uh, he's very tall. Um, Oh, it's hard to know if you're ready to be a parent. I have such respect uh, for parents. I really do, man. And I'm an uncle. Like, nobody claps when you say you're an uncle, and they shouldn't. There's no responsibility as an uncle. You know? My little nephew, Josh, gets dropped off, you know, a couple times a month. My brother's like, oh, we need a date night. Please watch him for a few hours. Sure, man. He's just five, you know? But I only have two rules as an uncle. Don't be creepy. Keep him alive. That is it. <laughs> that second one's hard, man. He's mischievous. Anybody have a mischievous child? You know what I'm talking about? Here's how you can tell, okay? If your child smiles and it causes strangers to be like, well, he is precious. But when you see that same smile, you're like, oh, no. He has put the cat in the dryer again. That's Josh. He's getting into stuff all the time. The other day, uh, he's in the yard playing with the neighbor kids. I'm watching him, you know, like a good uncle from the second story window. <laughs> you know, having some z -quil. I look down. He's going into my tool shed, brings back a can of gold spray paint. I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. But it's got the child safe lid on it. I'm feeling fine. So one of his friends goes into his dad's tool shed, brings back a hammer. I see a motion to Josh, hit it with this. You know? Now, if I'm a parent, I run down there, put a stop to that immediately, but I'm an uncle. <laughs> I was like, let's see what happens. Y'all, you know? he hit that can, he was instantly gold. It's amazing how fast a person can become gold. He was so shiny, he comes in all upset. I'm supposed to comfort him, you know? I'm like, get up here, buddy, you're okay. I would like to thank the Academy. <laughs> Trying to eat better on the road. That's one thing about me, man. People want to make you food sometimes. You know, you get, you're a guest in their home on the road. It's a comic. That's interesting. It's one guy wanted to make me lobster. I was like, well, I've had lobster at restaurants. I know the whole thing. You pick it in the tank and they go back. You don't know what happens, but you know, you know it was alive then, you know? <laughs> it's different, man. This dude was five feet from me in the kitchen. I heard the sound of the lobster going down into the pot. This whistling, screaming sound came out. I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> he comes out all defensive. Johnny, settle down. First of all, that's not a scream. That's just a physiological reaction. That's air escaping. Air is escaping. I said, that's what a scream is. <laughs> We're weird about food. It depends on if the animal's cute. That's our rule, you know? Like, I'll prove it to you. We change the name of the meat, the cuter the animal gets. Have you noticed that? That's a weird coping mechanism. Like, chicken meat's just chicken. Fish meat's just fish. Why? They're ugly and beady-eyed. Kick them in the face. We don't care. <laughs> we get to cows and something happens. We're like, cows are cute. Look at them. Beef. This one's beef now. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> this isn't deer. Oh, no. Venison. Enjoy that. Venison. Made up that word for you. <laughs> this isn't raccoon. This is a McRib. We changed the names. <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> Some of y'all like, is that true? <laughs> we don't know. 
This is true. University of Texas, a couple of years ago, one of the chemistry majors uh, did, a, did a study on all the chemicals in some of the fast food, right? It made national news because she found an ingredient in McRibs also used to make exercise mats. That's true. That's so gross. And if you're in here tonight and you eat McRibs, you're probably like, what is an exercise mat? That's amazing. little music for you. Well, this is fun, man. Well, I got married very young. I know, uh, did anybody, anybody else here married very young in life? Uh, I was nine, my wife was six. Anybody beat that? Uh, Tennessee's different. No, I was 21, my wife had just turned 19. There's an energy though, man. If you're married young, I heard I saw a couple of hands go up, man, I'm telling you, like there's an energy to being married young. It's like, we're gonna live on love. It's us against the world. It's super dumb. And so, <laughs> this is a song I wrote about that. It's a song I wrote about living on love. Baby, we got all we need to survive Cause we got each other and we're doing just fine So take my hand and walk through the night Cause we got enough to last the rest of our lives As long as we die by Tuesday <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thanks. And congratulations and good luck. Um, I love doing comedy in uh, clubs and events like this are so fun, man. I do a lot of corporate events too. Companies will bring in, do big parties and stuff. Sometimes you never know what you're gonna get with a corporate event. I did a hunting and fishing expo in Fort Smith, Arkansas last month and uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I walk out, it was 500 people in the dark, head to toe camouflage, all of them camouflage. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, almost didn't see you there. Nothing, I got nothing from these people. And, uh, it wasn't a cool stage either, like this with the cool curtain stuff. It was like uh, sheet metal screwed to the wall and then deer and elk heads screwed to the sheet metal, just staring at me the whole time. They had a stuffed turkey, a wild turkey, at the mic stand just... <laughs> not supposed to acknowledge this turkey, just tell my jokes like it's not there. I felt like that turkey story needed to be told. <laughs> so I wrote a song for those guys that night. I thought I'd play it for y'all here. Uh, this is my turkey song and I hope you enjoy it, but I'm really not counting on it. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, he's got a gun! The next song I want to do. <laughs> There's another verse, but we don't have time. Uh, we don't have time. <laughs> I notice country music starting to get into my life now. And you live in Nashville long enough, you're just inundated with country. I didn't really grow up on it, but now, man, it's in my soul. And this is a song I'm working on for my wife. It's our 25 year anniversary coming up. And so I thought I'd play it for y'all. You can tell me if I'm on the right track. They say that feelings fade away just like the morning dew But honey, they don't understand the way I care for you And even in our golden years, we'll never call it quits When we're old and wearing diapers, wearing Depends with benefits <laughs> That's all I have so far, and um, thank you That one's gonna be called, I Won't Let You Change Me It's brand new, I'm sorry, it's new Thank you It's new Okay I like country though, it's very sincere country music. You're wearing your heart on your sleeve. You say what you mean, mean what you say. You know, you know you're learning from the older generation in these country songs. They're passing down wisdom in these. You go to the fishing hole with Papa, he teaches you a life lesson, beautiful. But I didn't really have that kind of relationship with my grandparents. They were kind of creepy, kooky people. I don't know if they can relate. This is as far as I've gotten on my family song. It goes, these days we're in a hurry. No one takes the time to listen. If we ever stopped and looked around, we'd see what we've been missing. Like Saturdays at Grandma's, the whole family gathered round. We love to hear those stories as we sat there on the ground. She'd tell us about the good old days, and before she was through, she'd offer up some free advice, and most of it rang true. She said, try your best, hold your head up high, win or lose. And don't judge a man until you've walked a mile in his shoes. And you have to wear this tinfoil hat or the government will read your thoughts. That's <laughs> so when we realized that Nana might be crazy. I gotta finish that one. It's not bad. That one's not bad. Thank you, you guys. Oh, it's so sweet. I like country, I do. Give me 70s country though. This new stuff, whatever, man. 70s. Give me Merle Haggard. Give me Johnny Cash. Give me some Dolly. 
Hank Williams, that's country. You know what I mean? This new stuff, if you love new country, that's fine. To me, it's just dudes wearing girls' jeans, writing love songs to their truck. It's not cool. <laughs> They're just stringing cliches together over a beat, calling it country. It ain't. You turn on new country radio on your way home tonight, you hear a song like this. She never heard the word impossible. And she ain't familiar with regret. She don't know the meaning of many words at all. She's stupid. That's... That's offensive. Um... <laughs> well, I grew up a very random child. I was always just saying random things, random thoughts coming to my head. I was always... Anybody like that? You have a random child in your family, and maybe if, you're, if you don't, then you're the one. Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> I was always called like an old soul. Anybody ever called an old soul? <laughs> that means you're a weirdo. That's what that is. That's code language. And uh, I was always the random kid, man. I had ran and I still have random thoughts coming to my head today. I have no place in my show, you know, <laughs> or society. And so, so what I do with those, I put them with music and I'll leave you with this. This is something I call uh, the joke medley and we'll see how it goes. On Easter Sunday, I like to take my offering and put it in a tiny plastic egg and make the ushers search the room for it. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, I'm doing that next year. That's happening. <laughs> Do dermatology conferences have breakout sessions? <laughs> I think the slogan for Emodium AD should be, Do yourself a solid. It was gross, I apologize. <laughs> As a teenager, I was really awkward around girls. I wasn't someone you would call, someone you would call. <laughs> I hate when somebody uses the phrase, that's not really my cup of tea. Because I realize I've just poisoned the wrong person. <laughs> So my dad was a conjoined twin. That's not the joke, man. You got a lot of nerve. So my dad was a conjoined twin. We used to refer to his brother as my uncle on my father's side. <laughs> it's all right, guys. Settle down. It's fine. They were surgically separated. Now he's my uncle once removed. That was the joke, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Tremendous. Thank you very much. I'll leave you with this. Uh, people always want to know what's your favorite thing about uh, being a comedian. I love the rental car. It's a weird thing. I love the rental car, man. And my favorite thing about the rental car is the radio. I leave it on the presets. I want to hear what songs are going on in the radio stations in the towns I'm in. I hear my dumb phone songs for a thousandth time. So I pump up the radio on the presets. I was driving through today. It's freezing cold. I, I didn't care because I heard a song I'd never heard before. I was like, this is my jam. I rolled down the windows of the traffic light, pumped up the jam. You know? And it was a radio commercial. Has that ever happened to anybody else? You just feel manipulated and sad, you know? It always starts off great, and it was like... I want, I need, I want, I need. I was like, yes, do it. <laughs> it was like two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Dang it. <laughs> and now I'm starving. And this is where advertising is headed. We got to know that. We're the TiVo generation. We're the DVR people. We're fast forwarding through the commercials at home, right? I got a DVR at home. It's full of shows. I'll never get a chance to watch. I'm always traveling. You know, they're piling up on there. I love that show, Hoarders, but I can't delete them. I might need them. You don't know. You don't know. But these radio people are the worst. They trick you, make it sound like a song. You listen longer, they draw you in, you know? So you may hear this one on your way home, too. Trapped in this place I know so well, my home is like a prison cell and it feels like I can't breathe anymore. She comes inside and dries my eyes and takes my hand, we walk outside and I can breathe for the first time. Allegra. <laughs> 
Call your doctor, please, Allegra. For seasonal allergies, Allegra. If pollen makes you sneeze, don't be afraid of trees. Just take two of these. Allegra. I'm Johnny W. God bless you guys. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. <laughs>